This video is being sponsored by Ratchet Clothing. Take a look at their new Stranger Things collection. I'll put a link for their website down below in the description for this video. Maya Lansky is known, to say the least, as a criminal genius. Guys like Arnold Rothstein and himself taught the mob how to operate like a corporation. In 1970, Maya Lansky fled the United States for Israel, and he took along his wife, Thelma. The reason why he left was the federal government was looking to charge him with tax evasion. A special attorney for the Justice Department had been investigating Lansky's concealment of income from the Flamingo Hotel and Casino from 1960 to 1967. While in Israel, Lansky was served with a federal subpoena to appear before a grand jury in the Southern District of Florida. Israel's law of return gives the right to any Jew to settle in the state of Israel. However, the law allows the government to exclude those with a criminal past. On September 11, 1972, Israel's highest court ruled that Lansky wasn't entitled to Israeli citizenship. And it was a decision that he was not expecting and very disappointed over. In turn, Washington, D.C. invalidated Lansky's passport, except for his return to the United States. Prior to him returning to the United States, a federal grand jury indicted Lansky on tax evasion. His plane touched down at Miami International Airport, and he was immediately arrested. Okay, so before all the drama at the airport, while Lansky was still in Israel on April 3rd, 1971, he gave an interview which aired on Israeli television. During this interview, Lansky gave well-thought-out responses, but at times couldn't help conceal his criminal intelligence. Let's listen. Mr. Lansky, why are the American authorities after you? Because a newspaper man started a campaign against me, and it snowballed to such an extent but I guess it can't be stopped anymore. I was singled out for some reason. They needed an image. This has gone to an extent where it just snowballed, and I don't know how far it's going to go. And when did the uh, snowball start falling? Well, actually, it started about 1965, when some newspaper man wrote an article that I have $300 million. Well... I wish I had a million dollars. I said, many more things, remember, have been said about me. They accuse me of making a president. Now, I don't know Mr. Nixon any more than what I read in the newspapers. And the closest I ever got to him is seeing him on television. They claim I have 50% of uh, Lebanon casinos, 50% of Monte Carlo. The Roosevelt sent me to visit Batista on a mission. Now, how ridiculous can we really get? This is just a global lie. Say it long enough and you'll get the people to believe it. So you feel that you're a victim of public persecution? I sure do. Mr. Lansky, what does the name Jewish Mafia mean to you? You know, I never heard that until I read it in the Israeli newspapers. Why, it's most ridiculous. Are there many Jews in the... Uh gambling business? Well, when you say many, you'd have to judge by percentage. I think if you took the percentage of the gambling business in the United States, took the Jews, you would find them maybe in their proportion. Why is it said that you are the head of the organized crime in the United States? Well, that's the same principle that started the other gossip. That's most ridiculous. It's the news media again. It's the follow-up of the first thought. It was never said about me before years ago. All this came about just in the last few years. I didn't know as I was growing older it's going to get worse. Is there, there an organized crime? Is there? I have no knowledge of it. Are you a religious Jew? No, I'm not a religious Jew. And what are... But I am a Jew in my heart. Mr. Lansky, how do you reconcile the accusations against you in so many publications with your claim of innocence? How do I reconcile it? Well, it's from the same source. They started the publicity, they could never stop. 
And I was told by a good authority that they'll never stop. They have too big an investment in me now. I have been under surveillance for many years now, maybe for the last 10 years. And I'm sure if these men didn't find anything against me, who have every, uh, every resource at its hand, they should know whether I'm in any wrong activities or not. They would know much better than the writers. Do you want to become an uh, Israeli citizen? Yes, I do. Mr. Lansky, did you invest money in business in Israel, or do you intend to invest money? No, I'm retired, and I would like to stay as a retired man in Israel, just like any other retired Jew. Lansky blamed law enforcement's pursuit of him as a criminal on the media. He goes on to say that he was singled out because they needed an image. He said this all started in 1965 when a reporter wrote an article that he had $300 million. But the 1965 article cited law enforcement as saying that Lansky was worth $300 million from his criminal activities. He also speaks of being accused of making a president. He even makes a comment, I don't know Nixon, who at the time of the interview was the president. But he stays clear away from mentioning Franklin D. Roosevelt. But here's a quote from Lucky Luciano. I don't say we elected Roosevelt, but we gave him a pretty good push. I think most people remember the former bootlegger Joe Kennedy and how he used the mob to get his son, John Kennedy, elected president. Let's not forget, it. Luciano and Lansky also controlled the Cuban dictator Batista in the 50s. Lansky even mentions the claim that President Roosevelt sent him to visit Batista on a mission, a claim he calls ridiculous. Nevertheless, in 1933, after President Roosevelt repealed the Volstead Act, Lansky traveled to Cuba to make a deal with Batista for Cuban molasses. The molasses would be used in place of sugar in the liquor distilleries. At one point during the interview, he was asked about the Jewish mafia. But Lansky claims that he's only heard the term from the Israeli newspapers. He also called the term ridiculous. Back in Lansky's heyday, his associates included Bugsy Siegel, Louis Lepke, Arnold Rothstein, and Dutch Schultz, among others, all who were not known as Jewish gangsters. It was funny when he was asked if many Jews were involved in the gambling business. He let his guard down and began to talk about skills that only came natural to him. He began to talk about percentages. When asked if organized crime existed, he quickly claimed no knowledge of it. He acknowledged that he knew he was under surveillance for about 10 years and mentioned that law enforcement came up empty-handed as to anything criminal. Lansky ended the interview with saying that he wanted to become an Israeli citizen and remain in Israel as a retired man. As I mentioned earlier, he wasn't permitted to do that. Maya Lansky died on January 15, 1983, in Miami's Mount Sinai Medical Center. He was 81 years old. In his apartment, a notebook was found in a desk drawer. In it, he wrote, take the responsibility on your shoulders and it will leave no room for chips. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know you could hit the like button if you want. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you could do that as well. I welcome and appreciate all the new subscribers to the channel. Okay, till the next time, enjoy your night. I can say a lot, but I'm going to reserve that for posterity. Hope you enjoyed the story. If you would like to subscribe to this channel, you could do so down below. If you would like to subscribe to my other channel, Unlimited Substance Podcast, I'll add a link in the description to this video.